Praise the Lord. I said, Praise the Lord. Close your eyes and let us pray. Our Father, we thank you very much because of your promises, the promises in your word. We thank you because for all those who believe, those who believe your word, we know that you are going to rain your blessings down from heaven. Therefore, Lord, we're asking right now that you'll be mightily present here tonight in Jesus' name. And we pray, Lord, that the blessings that follow the people that believe, as you said, these signs shall follow them that believe. Those blessings will follow us tonight in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray you clear every hindrance out of the way of every boy, every girl, every man, every woman, everyone here tonight, so that your blessings will come upon us mightily in Jesus' name. Glorify the name of your only begotten Son. And bless everyone here tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said a bigger amen. amen. Tonight we're looking at a very important subject. And it's a subject you need to understand because it's your understanding of such a subject like this that will bring real tremendous innumerable blessings into your life i'm talking on the subject believe and receive believe and receive actually when you go through life what you receive in life depends on what you believe uh, let me tell you something where you are now the stage you have reached now what you have got now spiritual physical material actually is a result of what you have been believing believing all along and when we talk about believing this is very wide and very broad you believe god you must you believe the servants you must you believe this word you must you believe in quotes yourself that this is what the Lord has deposited in you. And you believe that you are here on earth for a purpose. And you believe that as you remain in fellowship, relationship with the Lord, that no matter what the hindrance or the stumbling block, the devil may put in your way. You believe that in your association with the Lord, or the purpose and plan of God for your life, and you see, the Lord has deposited in your life. This is going to be accomplished in your life. And actually, the Lord puts the thought into you. That thought becomes a dream. That dream is a vision. And it's conceived in you. You conceive it. You believe it. Then you receive it. You achieve it. And so as the Lord puts the dream in your heart and gives you a vision, and you know, here is where to go. You believe God, you believe his servants, you believe his word, and you believe what the Lord wants to do in your life. There is no limit, literally, to what you can achieve and become in life. We receive actually more by faith than we get by force. Maybe you want to write that down. It's a spiritual axiom, maxim, that you receive more by faith than what you get by force. Faith, force. You receive more by faith than what you get by force. If I could place that on the sky, above every campus if i could write that with a kind of letters that cannot be raised in the sky of every campus that as they are coming out of the lecture halls as they are coming out of the hostels as they are coming from town coming into the campus they look up like this and the only thing they see you receive more by faith than you get by force and then you realize that all our young people you know our young people they think there's nothing you cannot get by force they say force your way through 
bulldoze your way through. And you'll get anything. I'm telling you, you are the loser if you think that force will get anything. It's faith. It's what you believe. As you believe in God, believe a servant, and believe the word of God, and believe what the Lord wants to accomplish in your life. You get more by faith than by force. If I could get into uh, the, the, the fellowships of young, young people, young people, they read the Bible, but they don't understand the principle by which we receive things from the Lord. And here are these young people that feel that, you know, if you, if you can use force long enough, you'll get anything, anything you want. And although they pray, although they say they have faith, really they don't depend on that faith. It's, you know, it's a force. They think they're going to use, they're going to get anything. But, you know, when you come before the Lord and you understand that we are limited, puny, poor human beings. And there is nothing you can do to force the hand of the Almighty God. But when you come with faith, you say, yes, Lord, I believe. Because without faith, it's impossible to please Him. Because he that comes to God must believe that He is, and that He, the Almighty God, is a rewarder of them, that diligently seek him. And then, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to them that believe. And that's the reason you ought to consider a subject like this. Believe in order to receive. In fact, let me tell you something now. This principle, believe and receive, works on this side positive. And works on this side negative. Negative. Because, you know, here, here comes Elisha, the man of God. And as Elisha came, Elisha said, By this time tomorrow, the Lord is going to give us in this country so much abundance that a measure of flour will be sold at such a cheap price, you won't believe your eyes. And then the man on whom the king leaned and rested said, Even if God will open the windows of heaven, might this thing be? He believed the negative. He believed the impossibility. He believed that cannot happen. He got what he believed. Here are the children of Israel. They have come out of Egypt and they're going to the land of Canaan. And they, and they came to Kadesh Barnea. And then Moses said, You twelve representatives of the twelve tribes, go on to the land and see how the land is, how the cities are, how walled they are. And then come back and give us evidence of the fruit of the land. And so they went and they came back. And ten of them said, we've been there. Here is the fruit of the land. But, you know, there are wall cities. We have the sons of Anakims there. And there are giants there. We be not able. They were not able. That's what they believed. When you believe in the negative, that's what you get. But, I told you, it works on the positive side too. And Caleb and Joshua said, let's go. Go up at once because we are well able. And they did. And they went in. And they possessed. Because that's what they believe. Here comes Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. When you hear the sound of music, if you fall down, hit the ground, lick the dust well with you. If you don't. Who is that God that will deliver you out of my hand? Oh king, never mind. Go ahead. Do what you want to do. If you do that, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us out of your hand. That's what he received. When you pass through the fire, I'll be with you. When you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. You'll not be burnt. You'll not be drowned. And so, those who believed in the positive, that's what they get. 
And those who believe in the negative, that's what they get. Believe and receive. You decide tonight what you are going to have. And what you accept, believe, you are going to have, is what you are going to have. If you believe that miracle is on the way, I'm telling you miracle is on the way. If you believe healing is on the way, I'm telling you healing is on the way. If you believe there is a permanent blessing for you coming on the way, that permanent blessing is on the way in Jesus' name. You know, somebody would say, I went to that meeting and guess what did I receive? I didn't get anything. That's what you are believing that's what you are believing. When, when you came through the gates, and when you came into the hall, and when you sat down, and when you heard the word of God, that's what you are believing. You expected nothing. You got nothing. God is just, equitable. If you expect something great, something great is coming your way. If you expect, you are going to succeed and the power of the Almighty God will back you up. That's what you are going to get in Matthew chapter 21. Matthew chapter 21, I'm reading from verse 21. Jesus answered and said unto them, Then really I say unto you, If ye have faith and doubt not, ye shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also... If ye shall say unto this mountain, how many of you will talk to your mountain tonight? You just say to this mountain, thank you, God bless you, put down your hands. You say to this mountain that I be before you, hindering your progress. And then you forget all these stories they are telling us about ancestral spirit, you forget about that. You forget about all the things that came from our forefathers and great-grandfather and grandfather and father. You forget about that. And you look at the mountain. You don't care about the foundation of the mountain. You don't care about the history of the mountain. You don't care about the composition of the mountain. You don't care about the power behind that mountain. And you say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea. Jesus said, it shall be done. I said, Jesus said, it shall be done. And, and you remember what he said? Heaven and earth, the sun, the moon, the stars may pass away. But not a judge or title will pass away from the word of the Lord. When Jesus said, if you shall say unto this mountain, forget what the devil is telling you. Forget what your parents told you. Forget what those deliverance ministers in their ignorance, what they told you. Forget what the doctor has told you. If ye shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be cast into the sea. It says, it shall be done. It's then it gives us these marvelous words that only heaven can back up. These marvelous words that only somebody coming from heaven who knows the mind of the Almighty God can declare in verse 22. All things, all things, whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing, ye shall do what? Do you believe that God will answer your prayer tonight? You know, when we, come, when we come to meetings like this, and you have thousands of people, oh, people, I know that God is going to answer prayer. At least there will be some 10 people, 20 people there. Out of these thousands of people that, you know, God will answer their prayer. But me, I'm always unlucky. I'm never unlucky. I don't know about you. I'm never unlucky. When I come in the midst of the people of God and I hear the word of God, I'm never, never, never unlucky. And it says, whatsoever, whatsoever, all things whatsoever, all things whatsoever, 
all things whatsoever. Is it my academic success there? Is it my career there? Is it my profession there? Is it my, pray, my, uh, my promotion there? Is it my health there? Is it total deliverance there? Is it victory over sin, over sickness, over Satan? Is it it there? Is it my future happiness there? Is it my getting to heaven there? All things whatsoever. Ye shall ask in prayer. Believe in. Ye shall receive. That's what Jesus said is going to be done tonight. I said it's going to be done tonight. In Mark chapter 11. Mark 11. Reading there in verse 22. Jesus answering said unto them, Have faith in God. Are you burdened down by a load of care? Have faith in God. Are you anxious or worried? Have faith in God. Are you battered by the circumstances of life? Have faith in God. Are your enemies more in number and in might than your power? Have faith in God. Is the persecution rising so high? You think this thing is going to swallow me up? Have faith in God. Have you failed and failed and failed many times and you are wondering whether success will ever come? Have faith in God. Is it that you are so poor you are wondering how you will be able to pay your fees and how you will be able to move on? Have faith in God. Are you sick and the doctor told you that there is no solution to this? Have faith in God. Have you tested HIV positive? Have faith in God. Is it tuberculosis that is bothering you and you feel and you are wondering, how am I going to make it? I'm drying up. Have faith in God. Do you have sequel cell and they tell you that if you have sequel cell at uh, this particular age, you have crisis and you are gone. Have faith in God. Is it that something is moving about in your body and you are wondering, how am I going to do this? Have faith in God. Is it your in-laws that is causing trouble? Have faith in God. Is it the woman that, you know, came into your family and, you know, is, uh, you know, the adversary to your mother and you're feeling the heat of it on the campus? Have faith in God. Is it a lecturer that has a problem with you and threatened you and said, as long as I'm on this campus, you're never going to take any certificate out of this place? Have faith in God. Is it the devil that is coming every night when you dream and you saying, you're going to die young, you're going to die young. Have faith in in God. If you are facing God tonight, all your problems are over. All the difficulties are over. Anything the devil planned against you, anything in the confederacy of those witches and wizards in the forest, in the sea, anywhere that they planned against you, have faith in God. Everything is destroyed tonight in Jesus' name. Because, 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 for verily I say unto you, that whosoever, whosoever, who is that whosoever, you see there? I said, who is that whosoever you see here tonight? Whosoever, you are that whosoever. My sister, you are that whosoever. You know, that young convert, you are the whosoever. Praise the Lord, it doesn't say apostle. Praise the Lord, it doesn't say if any prophet shall say. Praise the Lord, it doesn't say evangelist and pastor and teacher. He said, whosoever, young or old man or woman, illiterate or educated, whosoever shall say. Unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart. That's the key there. And shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have. I will have it tonight. I will have it tonight. He shall have whatsoever he says. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall, and ye shall, and ye shall have them. That's why tonight we are looking at believe and receive. There are three points I'm still going to give you. You know, I'm never in a hurry. <laughs> That's why they hurry. I pity you. That's why they hurry. If you come to a place like this and you know you want to listen to me and you are in a hurry, you'll get frustrated, you know, you'll almost get angry, and then at the end you just adjust your mind. This man will never stop. Let me just adjust my mind and accept. When you are there and I'm preaching, just like, just adjust yourself. Uh, you know, turn the hands of your wrist or turn it back if it's bothering you. Praise the Lord. Three points here tonight. Number one. Number one, 
according to your faith. According to your faith. What are you believing the Lord for tonight? According to your faith. What are you believing the Lord for? In your life. In your body. In your brain. Your health. Your academics. The provision of the Lord for you. What are you believing the Lord for? According to your faith. Number two, the actions of faith. The actions of faith. According to your faith, that's internal. That's what you believe inside you. Inside you. But the action, that's the outward expression of putting that faith into reality. And then, number three, the accomplishments of faith. The accomplishments of faith. Number one, What's number one? According to your faith. In Matthew chapter 9, Matthew chapter 9, I'm looking at verse 27, verse 28, and verse 29. In Matthew chapter 9, verse 27. And when Jesus departed thence, two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was come into the house, the blind men came unto him. And Jesus says unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this? They said unto him, Yea, Lord, yes, Lord. And he touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. And their eyes were opened. And your eyes will be opened. And you will get your miracle. You know, they came to the Lord Jesus Christ and they gave a cry and they called on the Lord. They wanted the blessing of the Lord. And the Lord asked them, now, now you are coming. Do you really believe inside your heart that I am able to accomplish this? I'm able to do this? And he said, yes, Lord. And Jesus said, be it unto you according to your faith. And that's what the Lord is telling us. If you know that God is mighty. If you know that with God nothing shall be impossible. If you know that whatever problem you have now. There is somebody else in the Bible. Or outside the Bible. That had such a problem before. And did not solve the problem. And if you know that God is no respecter of persons. He did it for them. And he will do it for you. And he's asking you a question. Do you believe that I am able, that I have the ability, able ability, able ability. Do you believe that the God of heaven that created the universe. Do you believe that the God that created everything visible and invisible. Do you believe that this mighty God that created everything you are studying about in your geology. Do you believe that this God has the ability to do this? And a God that gave children to Sarah and Abraham in old age. Do you believe he can touch your body? That same God that healed the paralytic man that was born lame after 40 years of paralysis. Do you believe that same God that he has not changed? That he can do this? Do you believe that this same God that opened the eyes of blind Bartimaeus will be able to open your eyes to you? Do you believe that he has the ability to do it? Do you believe that? able i am able to do this he said yes lord then he said that's all right be it unto you according to your faith and that's what the lord is expecting the moment you say yes i believe yes i believe yes i believe i know he's able why will he not be able he upholds all things by the power of his might and of his word why will he not be able he dried on the red sea why will he not be able? He brought water out of the rock. Why will he not be able? He felt, he fed three million people with manna every day, 40 years. Why will he not be able? He multiplied the oil and the meal of the Shunammite, of the widow. Why will he, why would you not believe? Why is he not able? He took Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego through that fire. And did he feel the burning of that fire? Why will he not be able? Is he not the one that preserved Daniel in the lion's den? What problem do you have? What sickness do you have? What impossibility do you see in your life? I'm telling you tonight, this God is able. In Matthew chapter 8, 
Matthew chapter 8, verse 5. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant lies at home sick of paralysis, the palsy, grievously tormented. It wasn't just ordinary paralysis that he felt numb, he felt the joints and the muscles were not working, dead, but uh, there was torment with it too. And Jesus says unto him, I'll come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, who am I? I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof with the minute. And that's where some people, they cut off their blessing. I am not worthy. Oh, not being worthy does not cut miracle away from you. I am not worthy, of course. Who is worthy? And don't you remember that woman that was crying after the Lord Jesus Christ? Lord, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. Because my daughter is grievously tormented of the devil. And the disciples said, send this man away because she is crying after us. And Jesus answered not a word. And then she came and she knelt and said, Lord, help me, have mercy on me. And Jesus said, it is not right, it is not fit, it is not suitable, not meat, to cast the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. Of course she was not worthy. She was a dog, spiritually. And Jesus said, this is not right. This is meant for the house of the children of Israel. And I cannot cast the children's bread, give it to the dogs, all right, since I'm not worthy, bye-bye, no miracle for me today. Then oh, the woman stayed and said, yes, I know, I am not worthy, I'm just a dog. All I'm asking for is that the crumbs that fall from the master's table and fall on the ground, why don't you give that to me? And Jesus said, great is your faith, be it unto you as thou wilt. And he went back home and the daughter was healed. You are healed tonight. And so this man says, Centurion said, wait a minute, Centurion, that's a soldier, Centurion, and Centurion, Centurion, Century, Cent, Sam, in French, 100, in charge of 100 people in the battalion, and yet, he said, I have military might, but I'm not worthy, because, you know, worthiness, being worthy, it's not based on what we are in the world. Yes, have authority over slaves, over soldiers, over others. I say to this one, go, and he goes. I say to this one, come, and he comes. I say to this one, do this, and he does it. But I know I'm not worthy before you. You know, no matter who we are in the world, when you come in the presence of this mighty, thrice holy God, then you understand that your position in the world, your power in the world, your might in the world doesn't grant you anything that makes you worthy. But all the same, all the same, all the same. Even though you are not worthy, you come in humility before the Lord. He is willing to answer. And so you said, I'm not worthy that I shall come under my roof. But speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. For me, man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go, and he goeth, and to another come, and he cometh, and to this servant, and to my servant do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled, and said unto him, that followed, unto them that followed, Verily, certainly, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And then in verse 13, And Jesus saith unto the centurion, Go thy way, as thou hast believed. You understand? That's another way of saying, According to what you believe. According to your faith. So be it done unto you. And his servant was healed in the self same hour. It will happen to you. In the self same hour, that very moment, the healing came. The deliverance came. And you don't have to wait. The moment you call on the name of Jesus and you believe. You believe and receive. You believe to receive. You are receiving tonight. In Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9 verse 17. 
And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I brought unto thee my son, which has a dumb spirit. And wheresoever he taketh him, he cheereth him, and he foameth, and gnasheth it with, teeth, with his teeth, and pineth away. And I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out. And they could not. But the man did not give up. He had prayed before. The answer didn't come. He didn't give up. He had gone to the apostles, disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he couldn't do anything. He didn't give up. The apostles themselves were wondering, why, why, why is this? We're called on the name of Jesus. We did what we used to do. You don't you know that earlier he had sent them out in Mark chapter 6. He had sent them out two by two. And they had gone and brought back results. Those disciples, apart from the 70, that one is in Luke. But in Mark chapter 6, if you read it, you'll find it out. That they had gone out and, and they had been successful. But this, this, this particular one, it was a kind of stubborn problem that remained there. But then the man did not give up. Even though the people were wondering, why is it that the apostles could not do this? And then he said, in verse 19, he answered him and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? Which means then that it's when we're in the midst of a generation of faithless people that our problems refuse to go. Oh yes, there might be people that say they are believers. There might be people that say that they trust in the Lord. There might be people that say that, you know, they even believe in miracles. But, oh generation of faithless people, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you and bring him unto me? Hey, you understand that even though there have been failure in the past, even though there had been disappointment in the past, you can still come to the Lord today and He says, Yes, you didn't get it before, bring Him unto me. And tonight will be a different night. Yeah. And then it says, in verse 20, And they brought Him unto Him. They brought the child unto Christ. And when He saw Him, when Christ saw the child, straightway the Spirit tear Him, and He fell on the ground, while not for me. And he asked his father, How long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, Of a child. Maybe you've had a problem that had been there from the time you were very, very young. You knew yourself, you knew the problem. As you were knowing life and, you know, recollecting yourself, that as far back as the time I can remember that I did this when I was young, I did this when I was young, I saw the problem, I met the problem there of a child. And all times it has cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Uh, the man was not even believing 100% at this time. I was thinking, is, is there any solution now? If you can do anything, why don't you have compassion on us and help us? And Jesus answered him. Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, that's the key. That's the key. If you can believe, all things are possible. I want you, don't just read the scriptures. Don't, don't just, read, come on here now. Look up at me here. Begin to think about in your life. The things you picked up and said, ah, 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 I can't do that. That's impossible for me. Begin to think about, you see, you, you, since you got to secondary school and then you got to college or polytechnic or university, begin to think some ideas that came to you, some things that came to, and, and the Lord is saying, why not this direction? Why not this? And you, ah, 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 that's impossible for me. I know my limitation. That's what the Lord is saying. If you can believe, it's your faith. And if I can do something for you tonight, to turn that key, for you to understand that if you can believe, there is no impossibility in your academic work, in your personal life, in your family life, in, in the spiritual life, that if you can believe, 
You know, sometimes we think of people like Moses and oh, those good old days. We think of Joshua, those good old days. We think of Elijah, Elisha, we say those good old days. We think of Charles G. Finney, those good old days. And we think of John Wesley, those good old days. We think of D.L. Moody, those good old days. And then we say, but you know now, it's impossible for anybody to be exactly like that. If you can believe, all things are possible to him that does what? To him that believes. And you begin to think of, you know, I've read about some young, young people at a small age. That uh, they were able to, uh, they were like, uh, what do you call them? You know, already scientists at a very young age. And they read this like this, and if they read it once, they never forget. You know, you are talking to, you are talking to another student, and uh, you know, you just came out of the class, and you are discussing about that topic, and that other fellow recites everything that the teacher, the lecturer said. Oh, you, you say, you know, I envy a person like you. You have photographic brain. You, you, it's like once it comes in, it's in daily. It's always there. You say, but me, you know, that's what I find impossible. Cut that word off. Impossible. With you, nothing impossible again. I said, nothing impossible again. If God has to remove that brain that is there now that never recollects and then he has to put on put in there a new brain if god has to do that tonight god will have to do that because from tonight nothing shall be impossible in jesus name jesus said if thou canst believe all things are possible to Plural or singular? Plural or singular? Singular. Doesn't matter whether others believe or not. If you stay there tonight and all of a sudden you say, What's wrong with me? That I didn't believe? That I'll be healed from that infirmity and that sickness? What's the matter with me? And that I'm taking this sickness so serious? That I didn't know that the name of Jesus will conquer, will crush, will destroy this sickness out of my life. What's the matter with me? I'm that individual tonight. And I believe here tonight that this sickness is going. And then you look at, that, at those things in your life and in your body and say tonight, pack your load. Pack your load. All those nightmares. All those terrifying kind of things in your life. All those afflictions that, you know, I, you have been going about and say, devil, let me rest. Devil, leave me alone. You know, I don't know. Maybe I will go and beg this uh, woman at home. And if I beg her, I will, you know, buy this and buy that. And you have done everything. And you beg them. And you did everything you could do. And they are still running after you. All of a sudden, you stop. And you turn around. And you look at that thing that is following after you. You say, tonight, I command you, get back from me in Jesus' name. They will never follow you in your life in Jesus' name. You know, you know it even happens in the natural, even in the natural, apart from Christianity. That, you know, a dog is running after you and you are running, 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 running. And then you run to a point that you say, ah, I'm, I'm soon going to get at a wall and if I keep running like this, this dog is going to outrun me and it's going to bite me and then you stop all of a sudden and you turn back. Then you talk to that dog and say, get out of there and that dog, you are surprised, the dog becomes afraid of you and it will get away. The same thing in the spiritual, that thing that is following you, that curse that is following you, that mountain that is hindering your progress, it comes to a point in your life where you take your stand and you stand firm and you make a declaration of faith. You say, mountain, get out of my life and tonight it's gone in Jesus' name. That's why Jesus said, if you can believe, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes it's possible tonight 
and I rejoice with you because you are getting something tonight. You cannot, you cannot escape miracle tonight. And we finish tonight as you are going through that door going out, you'll be carrying miracle with you. Point number two, the actions of faith. The actions of faith. You know, you need to put action to the faith. Otherwise, it will not be real faith. It will just be thought in your mind. It will just be mental assent. In, in, in uh, James chapter 2, James chapter 2, verse 17, James 2, 17. Even so, faith, if it has not works, is dead, being alone. See that? Faith, if it doesn't have works, appropriate action, demonstrating it, revealing it. Let me, let me tell you this way. Like the air, A-I-R. You cannot see it, but you see it in its action. When it's blowing and then it's moving the leaves up and down, it is the action of the air that makes you to know the presence of the air there. It's the same thing that in your life, you will see that that thing is there by what it does. As I see the wire, electric cables, I don't know whether there's electricity there or not, but when I switch on and the light comes, it is that that is a visible evidence that electricity is in the cable. The same thing, it's your action. It's what you do. It's your corresponding action that puts reality to the testimony of the faith that you say you have. And then in verse 20, it says it again, But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works, without appropriate action, is vain, is dead? And then in verse 26, For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also, and that shows us then we need to put action to our faith, to demonstrate and to reveal that we really have the faith. You know, in the ministry of Jesus Christ, you'll find the people that were lame and Jesus just said, rise up on your feet. And you'll not be waiting there. They'll put action to their faith. They'll rise up. You believe I can do this? Yes, Lord. Open your eyes and see, receive your sight. They open their eyes expecting to see and they saw. And that, that is it. And that woman came to the man of God in the Old Testament and said, Man of God, you remember my husband who is now dead, but before he died, he owed a lot. And the creditors are after me. They want to take my sons. And what am I going to do? And the prophet said, go back home. And then what do you have? I have just a cruise of oil there and borrow vessels, not a few. Get into your house, get into your chamber, lock the door and begin to pour out action of faith, action of faith. That's what the Lord is expecting. If you really believe the Lord, you will not sit down there and say, well, I, maybe I'll get it another day. Not another day you are getting it today. And then you put action, action, action to that faith. In Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. From verse 17. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him, whom he believed, even God, even God, who quickness the dead. Listen to this. And calleth those things which be not as though they were. Calleth those things which be not as though they were. Before the things even came into existence, he, he said, it's just like that. It has come. And that's, how, and that's how God operates. That's how Christ operates. Philip said, 
who are we going to be able to buy food to feed all these thousands of people? What do you have there? And there is a young lad here that has his lunch, just some pieces of bread and then pieces of fish. Bring it. And then before he did anything at all, make the people to sit down in their groups. Demonstrate your faith that something is coming. Let them get ready to eat. Although the food is not here yet, let them get ready to eat. That's what we're talking about. Action of faith. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But now, I believe that whatsoever you will ask the Father, he will do it for you. And then they were moving on. And Mary came on and Mary also said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And then, where did you bury him? And then, they showed him. And Jesus groaned. And they said, Behold how he loves him. And some of the people said, Couldn't this man, who opened the eyes of the blind, made it that this man would not have died? And then Jesus got there and he said, Take ye away the stone. Take ye away the stone. Why would you take, ye, take away the stone? Lord, by this time, he stinketh. Because he's been there now for four days. Jesus said, didn't I tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? And am I not telling you tonight, that if you hear tonight, with that problem and mountain load upon your life, if you hear tonight, believe, you, of all people, you will see the glory of God tonight in Jesus' name. And so, they took away the stone. Take away the stone. That is the stone you have used to lock up that thing, seal up that thing. It's stinking. We don't want to see it again. We don't want to touch it again. It's gone. It's gone. There's nothing we can do about it. That stone of limitation that you seal it up. Take it away. A miracle is coming. And he took away the stone. And before Jesus ever prayed, he looked up and he said, Father, I thank you. Because you always hear me. And it's because of these people that are here that I'm even saying anything after that. He said, Lazarus, you've not finished your assignment here on earth. Don't go yet. Come forth. And Lazarus came forth. You will not die. Yeah. You have not finished your assignment. You will not die. Yeah. That thing that is pursuing you in the day and in the night. That is threatening you. I will kill you. I will kill you. You will not die. Yeah. Tonight we are going to crush and conquer that evil power in Jesus name. Yeah. You know what I'm telling you? That God calls those things which be not as though they were. Who against hope in verse 18 believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead. You do not consider the condition of your body you do not consider the medical report. You do not consider how things are as if, what can we do? What can we expect? Because look at this. No, don't look at that. Look at God. Look at Christ. Look at the promises of God. Look at the things that the Lord has told you. Not being weak in faith, he considered not his own body. Now dead. When he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb, he staggered not. Are you staggering? I said, are you staggering? That great, great, you know, you know the way they say, they said, that promise is so great, it's so big, it blew my mind. Don't let your mind be blown, be steady. You are getting something. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. But he was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised. Are you persuaded? 
he was able also to perform. Are you fully persuaded? The Lord will do it. I said the Lord will do it. And it is tonight he will do it. Point number three, the accomplishments of faith. We see the accomplishments of faith in the Bible, but tonight we're going to see the accomplishment of faith in your life. The accomplishments of faith. What does faith do? Well, you understand, faith saves. You've been in sin, a captive of sin, and it's like a total slave of sin. Then you have faith in the Lord. That faith will crush the power of sin in your life. And you've been thinking, hey, there is no way. I cannot do without committing that sin. From tonight, you will do without it. A power of faith. And that faith can also heal you. If, uh, you know, you have sickness, in fact, if you have deformity, infirmity, whatever name they call it, the faith we have in the Lord tonight, that faith is going to cancel that infirmity. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3. Acts, chapter 3, verse 1. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer being the ninth hour. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb. Maybe there's a problem you've got from uh, the time you were born. You know the name, they call it. Was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Who seen Peter and John about to go into the temple asked an alms. And Peter fasting his eyes upon him with John and said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. And then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, I give thee in the name of. Tell me out loud. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. You know, God is so wonderful and beautiful. He gives you more than you are even expecting. And the man was asking for arms, and Peter gave him legs. You see, the, the things he was asking for, he was asking for just, you know, a little thing. They tell me that you give a piece of fish to a poor man, and then he will eat that piece of fish, and he will need to be given another again. But... You teach that man, don't give him a piece of fish, teach him to be a fisherman and he'll never come back and he has a blessing that will carry him through life. If you are giving him just arms, just a little thing, he'll be in need again. But he gave him legs and sent him out of that place to go and work for himself. That's why I'm telling you tonight, what you are going to get is even more than what you are praying for. What you are praying for, you will get much more than what you are praying for. You will get in Jesus' name. It says, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up into your blessing. And he took him by the hand and lifted him up. And immediately, immediately, when? I said when? When are you going to get your blessing? When are you going to get your miracle? Immediately his feet and uncle bones received strength and he leaping stood up and walked and he entered with them. He never saw the inside of the temple before. It was always at the gate. You see this now walking and leaping and praising God and all the people saw him walking and praising God. We are going to rejoice with you tonight. I said we are going to rejoice with you tonight. And I tell you tonight, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, 
rise up into your blessing. I said, rise up into your blessing. As for rising up, the blessing is there. As for rising up, the miracle is there. As for rising up, the healing is there. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up into your healing. Rise up into your miracle. Rise up into your deliverance. It's there, it's there, it's there, it's there tonight for you. Rise up into the miracle that what God wants to give you. It's there. Is there if you can believe if you can believe all things are possible to him that believeth it's there it's there it's there the miracle is there for you the power of the Lord is there for you rise up it's your miracle 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 believe it believe it believe it believe it Believe it, all things are possible to him that believes. It's according to your face. It's according to your face. It's according to your face. It's according to your faith. It's according to your faith. Believe. It's there. The miracle is there. The healing is there. You'll get it tonight. You'll get it tonight. The miracle is there. All that bad luck is going. All those nightmares are going. All that brain problem is going. All that infirmity is going. All that deformity is going. The Lord is touching your brain tonight. He's touching your body tonight. He's touching your system tonight. He's touching your career tonight. He's touching your family tonight. He's touching you tonight. He's touching your husband. He's touching your wife. He's touching your academics. He's touching everything. Rise up it, your miracle. Do you believe the Lord can do this? Yes, Lord, I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. And it's unto you according to your face. 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 Do you think that sickness is greater than the name of Jesus? Never. Do you think that infirmity is greater than the name of Jesus? Never. Do you think that um, tuberculosis, that asthma, is greater than the name of Jesus? Jesus, I've been given a name above all names. That at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. To the glory of God, to the edification of the believer. If you ask the Lord tonight, he'll give it unto you. Ask, 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 it shall be given unto you. Seek, and you shall find, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Everyone that asketh, receiveth. He that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. It's your turn tonight. It's your turn tonight. There's a miracle waiting for you. There's a miracle waiting for you. There's a miracle waiting for you. Come on now, come on now. Reach out and catch it. 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 Yes, it's the miracle is there. Yes, brother, the miracle is there. Reach out, reach out, reach out, reach out and catch it. Don't entertain any negative thoughts. Don't entertain any sort of impossibility, any sort of disappointment, because tonight, tonight, if ye shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be cast into the sea, it shall be done. Is there? It's there, it's there. If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. It's there. It's coming your way. It's coming your way. It's coming your way. It's coming your way. Reach out and get it.
It's yours. It's yours. A God will never fail. And the word of the Lord will never fail. There's no devil, there's no demon that can hinder that blessing, that miracle tonight. The Lord will never fail. And there's no man, there's no woman, there's no witch, there's no wizard, there's no familiar spirit that can hinder the blessing tonight. And Lord will never fail. If thou canst only believe, all things are possible to him who believes. You get you the moment you believe. You get you the moment you believe. You get you the moment you believe. Believe and it's yours. Tell the Lord, look at that mountain. Look at that mountain. Don't be afraid of that mountain. Move it out of your life tonight. Move it out of your life tonight. Move that mountain, cast that mountain out of your life tonight. Whosoever, that's you, that's you, that's you. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that he shall have what he says, he will have what he says. Therefore I say unto you, all things whatsoever you ask in prayer, believing he shall receive. It's there. It's there. Reach out and catch it. It's there. Reach out and catch it. It's there. Reach out and catch it. It's tonight. It's tonight. It's tonight. Don't let any thought, any idea, anything, any impression anywhere hinder you tonight. It's there. Drive that dog that is running after you. Drive it away. That snake that is tormenting your life, issue the word of authority and command. Drive it away. Those afflictions and arrows and attacks tormenting your life, let your life be the end of it. And stand in faith and in authority or the name of Jesus in your mouth or the power of the Holy Ghost in your heart. Drive that sin away and it's gone. The victory is there tonight. 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 You've got it. You've got it immediately. 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 Your eyes are blind. You open your eyes immediately. You'll see. You're lame. You're paralyzed. One leg is shorter than the other. Immediately. The power of the Lord will arrest the situation. Receive your miracle immediately. Immediately. Tonight. The miracle has come. Your miracle has come immediately. Immediately. Reach out and get it. Reach out and get it. 
Reach out and get it. Let nothing, let nothing, let nothing stand between you and that miracle tonight. Reach out and get it. Immediately. It's there. It's there. Don't let the devil cheat you like he cheated you in the past. Tonight is your night of victory and healing and deliverance. Reach out, reach out, reach out, reach out. Reach out and get it. It's there. This mountain is going tonight. This mountain, it's going tonight. This mountain, it's going tonight. Yes, yes, it's going tonight. That sickness, that infirmity, it's going tonight. The devil has stayed too long, played on your intelligence too long. And the devil has seen that you too long, you have suffered enough. It's going tonight. Is going tonight. Be direct and forthright and bold against that mountain and speak. Speak, speak against that mountain. Get out of my life. Out of my body. Out of my brain. Out of my family. Out. And it's gone. going it has to go 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 we refuse to allow that infirmity that sickness there it has to go tonight 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 it must leave Whosoever shall speak unto this mountain, speak unto this mountain. What kind of mountain is there in your life? Hindering you from climbing, from going up, from making progress. Whosoever, whosoever, you are that whosoever tonight, take the key and the authority that the Lord has given you. Whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed. A casting to the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. Mean business with the Lord tonight and drive that infirmity, that mountain out of your life. Why do you allow that sickness to keep on tormenting you when you have the authority to get rid of it? Why do you allow that evil power, evil personality to keep on visiting you every night when you have the authority and the power to get rid of that thing? Speak to that thing, get it out of your life. Make up your mind, make up your mind. I'm not going to carry this sickness out of this place tonight. I'm free, I'm free, I'm free, I'm free. unto you according to your faith 
unto you according to your faith. Unto you according to your faith. Believe it and receive it. Believe it and receive it. Believe, believe, believe and receive. Believe and receive. It's there. It's there. It's there. It's there. It's there. Believe. It's there. Don't let the devil cheat you tonight. Don't let the devil cheat you tonight. Speak to this mountain and tell the mountain. You've stayed here long enough. You've tormented me long enough. You have disturbed me long enough. Tonight, tonight, tonight. This is the end. You are going. Tell that mountain. The word is in your mouth. The authority is coming from your heart. When you speak that word of authority, the devil has no choice. That sickness, disease has no choice. It has to leave. It's in the name of Jesus. The name above every name. The name above every name. It's in the name of Jesus. It's in the name of Jesus. Bring out that name. Against the problem, the mountain, the infirmity in your life. Speak. Speak. Speak, and it's done. Speak, and it's done. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. How ah, many of you is there tonight that believes tonight, no matter what devil, what demon, what disease, what evil power, I'm here tonight and I'm going to get my miracle who is there tonight, claiming the miracle, all those impossibilities in your life, all those mountains in your life, who believes tonight, who believes tonight that everything is crumbling before you, that the Lord calls your name Victor Victoria, that's why I conquer tonight, that disease will not have power over your life anymore that tonight as we mention this name of jesus every mountain will vanish out of your sight who believes there tonight i said who believes there tonight that when you go out of that door tonight you are going carrying your miracle carrying your miracle who believes tonight that impossibility is cancelled out of your life 
and that vision, that dream that you have already buried yourself, I don't think I can do it now. You know you can do all things. Through Christ who strengthen you, that miracle is coming your way. I said that miracle is coming your way. Put down your hand for a moment. Put down your hand for a moment. I only want the people that believe tonight, I'm going to have a testimony to raise up their hands. Only the people that believe that tonight, I'm not sick anymore. I'm not defeated anymore. I'm not oppressed anymore. I'm not tormented anymore. I'm not harassed anymore. All those nightmares, they're not in my life anymore. I turn my back against failure. I see success in front of me. Failure, you are gone and you are gone forever. I am a victor tonight. I am more than conqueror tonight. I have a testimony tonight. There's a miracle attached to my name tonight. I am miracle. I am miracle myself. Miracle myself. I'm asking for those people that have a testimony tonight. Where are you? Can you raise up your hand? It's unto you according to your faith. It's unto you according to your faith. It's unto you according to your faith. God has lifted you up. You will never come down in Jesus' name. Keep up that hand of miracle. Keep up that hand of testimony. Keep up that hand. Keep up that hand. A miracle has come your way. Amen. We are praying not that the miracle will come. It has come. We are praying that God will confirm that miracle. That you will see that miracle. And when you hear, when you hear the final amen, you look around you for the mountain, you look around you for the sickness, you look around you for the infirmity, and you will not see it anymore. Raise up that hand of victory. Father, in the name of Jesus. I thank you for every brother here, every sister here, every young fellow, every older person here. I thank you, Lord. You have given them the miracle already. Sickness cannot overcome them anymore. Demons cannot harass them anymore. Lord, confirm the miracle in Jesus' name. That pain in your body there, I command, come out in Jesus' name. I command that insanity, that mental problem, come out in Jesus' name. That epilepsy, come out in Jesus' name. This asthma there, mountain of asthma, I speak against you right now. Without a shadow of doubt in my heart, asthma, come out in Jesus' name. Tuberculosis there, I command you right now, come out in Jesus' name. That incessant cutter that's always there, I command you right now, dry up from the very fountain. Be healed in Jesus' name. The swelling in any part of your body there, I command, come out in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that every form of sickness, every form of disease, anything that causes pain in the body of this, your beloved people, cancel everything in Jesus' name. Lord, tonight we bring failure under their feet. Failure under their feet. Failure under their feet. And we replace failure with success in Jesus' name. The sorrow that have been in their heart, the regrets that have been in their heart, living a sorrowful life, a sad life, carrying themselves about as if there is nothing in life again, that sorrow from the very root, I pray, O oh Lord, every plant you have not planted in the lives of any of these people, approach it in Jesus' name. All the demonic afflictions, all those attacks, I pray, O oh Lord, deliver every one of them now in Jesus' name. Any mountain, any mountain, financial, academic, professional, in the family, any mountain, in the presence in front of any of these people of God, I command you right now, move out in Jesus' name. 
that mountain of impossibility I command you move out in Jesus name all the problems the harassments of the devil and enemies that are just pursuing them pursuing them pursuing them and it's like they are just fed up of life that person there that even felt maybe i should commit suicide i command all the things harassing your life that makes you to come to that point come out in jesus name lord i pray whatever miracle they need you have given them already therefore lord i pray that they will open their eyes into miracle they rise up into miracle. The lame people rise up in Jesus' name. Blind, open your eyes and see in Jesus' name. Deaf and dumb, I command you begin to hear. And begin to speak in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that those who are married have been, and have been looking up to you for children, touch the wife, touch the husband. Give them children in Jesus' name. Lord, anything that these people of God opened their mouth tonight and they said, Lord, do this, confirm it right now. Confirm it right now. Confirm it right now. Lord, I believe that as they have believed, may they receive immediately now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because I know you have answered in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Check yourself, check yourself, wherever you are, you start as you thank the Lord, as you hear what the Lord, see what the Lord has done, just say praise the Lord and you come out. Check yourself, you come out there. Check yourself. As you discover what the Lord has done, come out. And I'm so excited today because God has been so faithful to me. I'm going to keep this very short. First of all, I want to thank God for the church. The church has been my family. Um, thank you so much, Pastor Dada. He has been a father to me. I don't start crying. Okay, um, I remember I came here without um, scholarship to Harvard University. The first year wasn't easy, but I got a grant that paid half of my tuition. But then from second year, I got like five different scholarships from my department. So I just thank God. Third year, the same thing. And I thank God because I'll be graduating in May. I didn't have to